one. Hi everyone, I'm Christine Josty of Mail Something Pretty and I wanted to show you these fun, just kind of happy spring wheelbarrow cards. These make me so happy. I particularly love this paper and I'm gonna show you where it comes from. I'm using the Garden Meadow stamp set as well as the dies that go with it. So there's some using the wheelbarrow die for this one. And I'm going to do a coloring technique. I'm gonna show you my water paint excuse me, the water painters with the ink pads. And I think, oh, and I'm gonna show you some new, actually I'm showing you a few new things. Um, these are new dies and they're called perennial postage dies. And they um, kind of resemble like a postage stamp, have that kind of shape to it, all different kind of sizes. And they even have this fun little uh, like cancellation um, postage so we'll be you'll be seeing lots oops you'll be seeing lots of samples using these they're great dies alrighty so let me get started here I think the first thing I'm gonna do is um, stamp and color my wheelbarrow so I'm just gonna use some scrap here I am because I'm using a aqua painter or the old name a water painter um, it comes in a set of three this is kind of the medium tip there's one that's a little bit smaller and there's one that's um, really thick uh, wide like a paintbrush to do backgrounds so I'm going to use that and you can fill these up with water they just turn right off and you fill them with water and actually it says push right here and you can squeeze it to get water out. but I kind of um they they um they turn closed the opposite way that you think um i just use a container of water and i kind of use it like a paintbrush so i'm going to use the wheelbarrow let me show you that stamp set again it has a lot of fun things in it um this is great because i'm a gardener i'm part of a garden club um, so this really speaks to me so i'm going to use my here it is just not in the right spot my stays on um, black ink because I'm using the water painter, so it introduces water, I'm using stays on ink. Um, if I was to use like the blends markers in color, I would use the Memento ink. But stays on is a alcohol based permanent ink. So anytime you add water, like the watercolored pencils, um, the water um, pens, I'm trying to think of anything else, you want to use the stays on because it won't run. Um, because if you used a water-based ink and you introduce water, it's going to run. Makes sense. All right, so this is a large stamp. So I'm going to, sometimes I just take my pad upside down and ink it this way. I also like to keep my blacks really dark, and so they have an, a refill. So I recently added some ink to it, so it should be nice and inky. There we go. All right, put that aside. I'm gonna cover my ink pad, because otherwise I will put my hand in it. And now I'm gonna color. So I have different colors here. Um, this was actually a club project, and so a lot of people in club did um, this color combination, and I didn't have any more paper, sadly, so then I said, well, I'll make up a sample um, with this. And actually, I'll show you. This is paper, this is new paper from, uh oh, there it is, sorry. I feel like I'm out of practice. From the Celebration Catalog. So um, Celebration will be January and February of 2024. And everything, I can't open it up yet because it's that date hasn't happened yet. But everything in this catalog is free with a qualifying purchase. So this is one of the free items. So you can kind of see the paper. Um, it's fun paper with clouds. It's nice and bright, so I'm going to use that page. Look at this. I almost used the strawberries because it matches the colors, but I, well, they're flowers. They're not fruit. Um, cherries. So it's fun, fun, fun paper. So that is actually a free set of paper um, in January and February. Sorry, I'm just trying to decide what color I might do my wheelbarrow. So the reason why I'm... Um, <laughs> hesitating is so I did this wheelbarrow 
and I actually have a green wheelbarrow um, with a shaded spruce which was to match this shaded spruce paper but look at the difference between the watered down ink and the, the paper and so it's so one way is I could add two colors but now I'm thinking I might do this color wheelbarrow on here although what I use to the colors on this one the wheelbarrow I use gray granite the um, the metal parts I used uh, copper clay I used um, basic gray for the wheel and then the flowers I used um, crushed curry and poppy parade to match the papers in the paper and then I used uh, granny apple green I think I will actually because I'm using Okay, I figured it out what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do it and then we'll get along. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, if I don't have it exactly scripted, then I I don't know what to do. Okay, so I just have a paper towel. Um, so I'm going to dip. Oh, actually, before I do that, let's do, we will actually do the wheelbarrow first. Let's see what happens with that. And I actually have, just in case, I have extras cut out. Um, so there are a couple ways to get to use your water painter with your ink pad. So um, you can just actually dip it straight directly in the ink. You can, if you had a re-inker of the same, you could squeeze some re-inker into the little reservoir tray here. Or what I do is I turn it upside down and then I give it a good kind of squeeze with pressure of my thumbs because I'm trying to squeeze the ink to the the tray and the reason why you can try it this way but I find I can get a little more pressure when it's upside down and then you get ink right there so that's what I'm gonna do and I'll show you another way of getting ink there too so we're gonna do this process with all the parts of our wheelbarrow so we're gonna dip kind of just like a paintbrush in water I'm gonna dip it in a little water and I'm gonna grab a little ink in here and then I'm just gonna paint as they say. So I'm gonna do the edges of the, the rim first. And you can do, depending on how much water you add in, you can um, make it darker or lighter. Um, I love to paint, so I really like this technique, this coloring technique. And there's really nice tips on the brushes here. So I think what I'm going to try to do is add another color to the wheelbarrow to make it darker because this one dried lighter. So I think what I'm going to do, we'll see what happens. I'm going to add a little mossy meadow green on top just to see if it, yeah, it makes it a little bit darker. So because I'm using just basic white paper, I don't want to add too much water because then the paper will kind of curl. But if I was using the watercolor paper, that holds the water really well. All right, so we'll see how this looks when it dries. All right. Those. And then what I do is I just kind of, as a paintbrush, just put it in the water and then use my paper towel just to dry it. So we'll see how that looks. So now then my next step, I'm not going to do the leaves because those are touching. I'm going to give that a little bit of time to dry. So I think I will do the, um, the metal parts. So this one I'm using, see, it, sometimes it's hard. Actually, I'll show you another way to squeeze it. You can take a block just press it in oh, this one you're not going to see but there's ink on there Get a little water i should have done that with a color because you would have seen it better but it it just acts as another like palette you could take your painter directly in the ink and that will be a little darker Just try to do this quickly. I could spend hours painting. And there is a little hand, you don't see it at first, but there is a little part of the handle right there. 
and you could do the rubber part here the grip a different color or the same color all right so I'm not I don't have to wash this because my next color I'm going to do oh actually is a darker gray but I am going to do this part the same color dark all right so then this is a darker gray wheel because I did can't you really use my black ink because it's I wouldn't be able to water it down like I'm doing here so the basic gray works just fine for it represents a dark colored tire if you wanted you could get fun you could even put like a little dirt on there all right yeah, I'm kind of liking that color. All right, so the next one I think I'll do, I'm going to save the green leaves for last again, just to give that a chance to dry. I'll do my, look, I just got a little bit there, but that might be enough. My yellow flowers. These are kind of nondescript, so they could be petunias. They could even be pansies. They could be marigolds, they could be a whole bunch of things, depending on what color you paint them. All right, now if you didn't have this many ink colors to do this process that I'm doing, just to make sure I got them all, you could um, use the watercolor pencils, would work great. You could use regular pencils. Or if you stamped it in uh, the Memento, you could use the blends markers. All right, so this is Poppy Parade, which is the color of the base of the card. So that's why I wanted to make sure that I used this color. In this, I'm just kind of squiggling. <laughs> and what I'm gonna, gonna do after I get all these, these could be like lupins. Um, they're kind of the shape of um, lilacs, but certainly not this color. And now I'm just going back with a little bit of the darker ink and just kind of dotting it just to, so it's not all flat. You have a little color variation in there. All right, and then clean off my brush and now we'll do the leaves. And I chose grainy apple green leaves. Oops. Leaves can be in a whole bunch of different color greens, but this is kind of a happy, cheery green. All right, let's see how it looks next to the wheelbarrow. All right, and what I'll do, you'll see like there's some spaces in there. Once I do all the leaves, I'm going to go back and just fill in some of those spaces, that white space with just a little green, right? So it just kind of gets rid of some of that white. All right, so now I'm just gonna let that sit and dry before I cut it out. So we'll do the other parts of the card. Just let's set that aside. And so remember, um, you can color your wheelbarrows any color that you want. So we'll close this, I don't wanna spill that water. All right, so I already did some pre-cutting here. Like I said, I used the Poppy Parade. Just because this is the first card I made, I just took the color straight from the paper. It's Poppy Parade, Pool Party, um, Crush Curry, and Black are, of those. And then this one um, is Shaded Spruce. So that's what the one I'm going to use on this card. So I took uh, my paper and I cut it in half the long way because I like it when you have cards that open up this way, kind of the horizontal, um, they just sit nicely on a tabletop. So I cut them that way rather than if they were cut, you know, the other way, they would kind of flop down a little bit. But it's a standard size, so you can cut yours whatever you like. And so this first layer is just standard, it's a quarter inch smaller. So it's five and a quarter by four. Actually, I'm just going to 
Yeah, I can put this down. I want to show you a technique, what I did with the vel vellum. So when I was designing this card, I, I've said already, I loved this paper. Like if you were to design paper for me, it would be this paper. So I wanted you to see a lot of it. So when I was doing the wheelbarrow, at first I was going to say, well, you could just put a whole layer of white here. And I wanted to use the, um, oh, I forget what they're called, the, the post, postage dies. Um, so to do that is I use the vellum so it softens us a little bit but you still get the whole picture of the pattern and all of the colors. So I already cut um, this with the vellum. So when you put that together, move that aside a little bit so you can see. So here's the vellum. So that's it's a good paper whenever you want. You need a little something but you don't want to distract try vellum as your layer because I think that um, I think you'll be happy with that and then I could have put the wheelbarrow just straight on it but it was a little pattern so I toned it down I just took from the black and there's black in this paper too I used a smaller of that same set and I used the black and it just kind of makes that pop up but you can still see the whole image all right that's still a little wet but um, we're gonna cut it. All right, so, or actually, you know what? Hold on, we can do the inside. Give it a f another second. I did the inside. Um, I used another stamp set. I should have done that before. To me, this totally, well, it looks like lup lupins or lupines, depending on how you say it. All right. So actually, I didn't have to put all my stuff away. We'll do the green first, since I have it here on top. Um, let's do a little water in there. So I'm just going to do the leaves. And what I did is I actually just kind of highlighted the, the grass a little bit just to give it a little something so it wasn't floating. And then I just used the Poppy Parade to match what I did on the front. and try to put a little couple of dots in there. All right, so we'll let that dry as well. And now we'll cut our wheel arrow. This is <laughs> should have been a, a faster video because it's really kind of, it's not all that complicated, but it takes a bit for it to dry. All right, I'm gonna use my little mini machine. And so I'm just noticing this is not going to fit in there. It's fine. So I'm just going to trim it down a little bit. So now it will fit through. All right. So yeah, a little sandwich. And now I have to see where did, oh, here it is. Place that on there. This die is pretty easy to line up. Put that on top. And presto. There we go. We have our cute little wheelbarrow. All right. So what I did, when I use vellum, I try not to use glue. So I use this glue for almost everything, but I try not to use it with the vellum because the glue has water in it, moisture, and it will make the vellum kind of curl a little bit. So what I did is I used, I'm going to use dimensionals. So I'm going to flip that over. I'll just put them in the corners. One in the middle. 
and I'm going to center that up. Is that what I did? Oh, you know what? That's okay. I realize now what I did. Uh, do I have another one to show you? I do. So that's one option. You said we're going to use dimensionals anyways, but what actually what I meant to show you was I used tear and tape. You could use glue dots as well. So for this part, I used tear and tape, which is nice and sticky, but not wet from glue. The backing comes off. And now I put this in the middle. Oh, I got a little water in my black. That's all right. That will be hidden. So now what I did, we'll do it on this one. Put that aside for my other card. I'm going to use dimensionals on my wheelbarrow. And this, actually, I could have used glue because it's going placed on the black, but I wanted it to pop up a little bit. So that's going to get placed right like that. And then I'm going to flip it over. You can see how you can see the tear and tape. So you can see adhesive through vellum. So I always try to hide it. So what I'm going to do is I could put tear and tape down again to put it on the card, but I kind of like it raised up. If this was flat, you would see the pattern a little bit more, but because I use dimensionals, it raises it up and it gives a little bit more like of a smoky feel. So I'm just going to put dimensionals underneath, I don't know if you can see, underneath where the black is. So it's hidden. I'll put one in the middle too. So it, it all sticks, but you don't see how it, how it's stuck. All right. So now we'll go back to our, make sure it opens the right way, our card base. So now this is going to get placed kind of center and then you press down on it and do you see how like if this was flat down you would see a little more of the pattern but it breaks it up a little bit and on the inside I will put my inner layer and this is fine to use glue my glue is almost empty because there's no vellum involved with that one I always do that. I smooth it out and then I move it. But you got a few seconds there with the glue. All right. So I didn't even put words on this card, but there are some really nice words with this stamp set. Any of these would look lovely on the inside of this card. So depending on who I send it to, then I will stamp the word. Oh, and on this one, actually on either, I didn't do it on the other one. I have, these are actually part of the whole suite, the garden meadow suite, the dyes, the um, stamp set. There's actually beautiful paper, but these dragonflies and birds kind of go with the suite. So I'm just going to throw a little dragon, oops, little dragonfly there just for a little subtle. This one I didn't put one on, but so those are the two. So I'm really actually, I'm really happy I did that. I added the two colors, the shaded spruce plus the mossy meadow to kind of tone down. And I may go back and add that to this one because this one now it's just a little bit bright for my eyes. But so I'll just show you these two. Those are the two cards. So thank you very much for watching. I'm Christine Josty of Mail Something Pretty. If you are new to me, hello and welcome. Um, you can visit me at my blog, mailsomethingpretty.com. And while you're there, sign up for my mailing list and you'll get emails each week on all sorts of paper crafting information. And if you haven't done so already on YouTube, click um, the notifications bell. I think that's what it is down below. And so you get notified whenever I upload videos. Thank you very much. I hope you like this project. Let me know in the comments. Have a great day. Bye-bye.